everybody and welcome to another vlog episode. I promise one of these days you're going to see footage with sunshine, but not today. Today it is rainy as all hell, so I figured this was a, uh, a good opportunity to show you something that's a little bit different and also talk a little bit about riding in the rain and uh, maybe a little update on the channel or something like that. Now maybe weather like this comes across as a little bit scary, but I actually really, really enjoy it. It's, it's a bit of an adventure going out in conditions like this. And, um, you know, as long as you take it easy and you don't do anything crazy and you keep a check on pools of water, that sort of thing, so you avoid aquaplaning, it's really not that dangerous. I mean, you have to think a little bit differently when you're riding. You have to be a little bit more conservative with throttle and, uh, you know, leaning into corners, that sort of thing. When, you, when you're out here exposed to the rain and you feel it hitting your body, through the rain gear and yet you're staying warm and cozy inside of it it's it's almost like sitting under a porch during a rainstorm it's it's really quite lovely now one major difference between uh, a motorcycle in the rain and a car in the rain is of course I don't have any windshield wipers so I get a lot of rain droplets on the visor and my visibility goes down quite a bit so th that's one reason why you have to be a little bit more careful. But as long as you're aware of the risks and you drive with good safety margins and you keep attention to the traffic ahead of you and the road conditions, you should come out okay. This is really, th this spring has been quite terrible. It's been cold and gray and rainy and dismal for months. Now I thought, finally we were going to have some good weather and then this thing drops on us. There's going to be around 70 millimeters of rain today alone, which is a lot for a Swedish city. But at least for the moment, we get a bit of a break from it in the tunnel. Now here instead I have to deal with uh, my visor fogging up. I do have a pin lock visor installed. Uh, it's an extra little visor that sits between you and the main visor, it acts as an air gap so that at least part of your visor stays clear. But, you know, it, it never works to 100%, so. I should bring up my tires. On my last video, you saw I went to the track. Um, the tires in Michelin Road 5s, they were almost brand new at that point. I had broken them in, but they had so much grip in the corners that really it, it felt like I was glued to the road. And uh, now I've had a, a, a chance to really try them in the wet weather as well. They, they feel really, really good as well. If I look in the rear view mirror, I can just see them. Basically, it's, it's almost like Moses. They're, they're parting all the water on the road and just cutting through it like butter. I feel like I have a ton of grip as well. You're, you're supposed to have, I guess, around 90% of your usual grip even in a situation like this, and especially with good tires. But I don't know how much of it, um, of this confidence I'm feeling is really actual grip and how much of it is just, I know the tires are good, so they feel grippy to me. I'm certainly not pushing it. And you know, uh, how do you know the limit of a tire unless you push it to the limit and you really don't want to do that on a motorcycle? One little trick that I've discovered is if you find that there's a lot of water accumulating on your visor, you can move your head a bit and uh, let the rain catch the wind. And then it'll sort of clear itself. If you're really desperate, you can also do just a wipe, but then your gloves get wet. Man, it is so wet. Again, though, I am very warm and snug. I'm wearing like full rain gear obviously but the rain gear is made of plastic so it's, it's like wearing a plastic bag it's it, it retains the heat a lot it's only maybe 12 or 13 degrees outside um <laughs> i say outside so n normally i would be very buttoned up at this point but i i actually have my jacket has this extra zipper that lets air through it and i have that open right now because if i closed it fully it would be too warm 
my gloves though, you know, they're, they're leather, but they're, they're slowly getting wetter. Now one scary thing I've encountered is when you're driving on a highway like this and there's a divider, there could be some water puddle on the other side. You, you sort of have to keep a watch for that because I've, I've been drenched by those water puddles before when like a truck goes over it and that is not fun on a bike. So really, ideally, I shouldn't be in this lane. And in fact, maybe I'll move. So I, I think that's... There, did you see that? That was a water splash right there, but it came from our side to the other side. See, I, I think a lot of what makes a good rider is just paying attention partially, but also planning your driving properly. Um, there are certain risks like that water splash that you don't really understand until you've experienced it once. But once you have experienced it, it's just a matter of adjusting your driving. The left lane is faster, but I would rather get there in one piece. Okay, let's slide in here. Another example of this planning behavior, something that's actually really good with motorcycles is You'll notice I have a very high vantage point here. I'm seeing above the roof of the car in front of me. Uh, most cars, you know, SUVs maybe being the exception in big trucks, most cars have a much lower vantage point than I do, which means I don't actually look at the brake lights ahead of me as much as I look at the car in front of that car and in front of that car, because that, that lets me anticipate braking situations a lot sooner than I'd otherwise be able to. During the uh, riding education in Sweden, you do the safety course where you uh, experience different risk scenarios and, you know, see what happens to the bike in them. Uh, one of the exercises you do is that you, you measure out what you think is the average distance that cars keep from each other on the highway, sort of like this distance, and then they put out a rope and you follow behind a car at the distance of that rope. And then at some point, the car is going to break, and then you have to break. Now, you're not riding right behind the car, so there's no risk of hitting it. You're riding sort of parallel uh, or diagonally behind it. But the demonstration there is that the distance is always too short. Whenever the other car starts braking, you know, by the time you've realized this and applied brakes and managed to stop yourself, uh, you've traveled, you know, all the way up to the driver's cabin of the car, essentially. That's intended to teach you to keep your distance, and that is a good lesson. But I think a better lesson is, in real life, it's not just going to be the car in front of you that stops dead for no reason, it's going to be the many, many cars in a row that are interacting in traffic, and then somebody stops somewhere, which makes the next guy stop, which makes the next guy stop, which makes the next guy stop. And if you're only seeing the final brake lights, you're going to have a lot less time to react than if you see all of them. All right, let's move ahead a little bit here. Most of these cars seem to be keeping a good distance, you know, from the center line. There we go, nice and safe. It's strange when you, uh, you know, when you travel on roads like this, <laughs> you start noticing traffic patterns that um, are very localized like in this tunnel we're, this is 
like a slight uphill, always in this uphill, there's traffic and it always slows down. And then once you get sort of over this peak, um, once you get over this crest, it, it just starts moving a little bit faster. You know, I'm just on my way back from the office and uh, well, it was there at least five or six people said like, I, I can't believe you rode a motorcycle in this weather. <laughs> And certainly, this isn't exactly easy riding. It isn't, you know, the weather I would choose to be in, but there's no bad weather. There's only bad clothes. This is as much fun as anything else if you have the right mindset. Alrighty, we're coming back out into the open and shit's about to hit the fan again. Here comes the rain. Bam! Actually, it's not that bad here. I think it was worse on the north side of town. I should also mention that my vlogging setup, um, I'm using a GoPro and GoPros, uh, they don't have any like normal exposed microphone port. You need, you need an adapter and the adapter plugs into a USB-C connector and the USB-C connector is hidden in the SD card slot. Right, no it's not in the SD card slot, it's hidden in the slot anyway. And uh, in order to access it while riding, I had to remove the door. So I'm not exactly waterproof right now. I, uh, I'm hoping slash assuming that it's not gonna get too wet anyway, but uh, we'll see. Maybe this is my last episode ever. Anyway, guys, that's it. I am uh, I'm currently homeward bound, almost there. So uh, I'm gonna call it quits here. Um, thank you for joining me on this rainy day, and uh, hopefully we'll do it again soon. Like and subscribe and all that shit that you're supposed to do on YouTube, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs> Those guys don't have an umbrella.